Hey guys, welcome back. We are doing lesson three for phonics. So let's get busy. All right, let's get rid of all these floating bars and everything. All right, lesson three. Our learning targets, I can write the different spellings for consonant sounds. I can read words with the sister sounds p and b, and I can identify the difference between a statement and a question. So we're gonna do some dictation right now. So I want you to take out your whiteboard and we're gonna practice writing the spellings of consonant sounds that we have studied in previous units. I'm going to say some sounds and you're going to write the spellings for each one. And I will tell you how many spellings to write for each sound. Okay. So here we go. Your first sound is m, m, and there are two spellings for m. Okay, what about our spelling, n, n, there are two spellings for n. Our third spelling would be f, f, and there are two spellings. Number four would be l, l, and there are two spellings. Number five, p, p, there are two spellings for the p sound. Number six, k. K. There are four spellings for this one. So this one may be tricky. So think about it. K. Number seven. G. G. There are two spellings for G. Number eight. B. B. And there are two spellings. All right, so let's look at our next slide here. So for m, you should have written one m and two m's, but it sounds like m. N, the n sound, is written with one n and two n's, but it still has the n sound. And the same with f, one f and two f's. L, one L and two L's. P, one P and two P's. K, this is our four sounds. We have a K with a C, a K with a K. Then we have the CK that has the K and the double C with the K. And then we have the G sound with one G and two G's. And then we have the B with one B and two Bs. All right, let's do some sound review. So let's review the B sound as in bat. So repeat that sound with me. B. Great job. We have also reviewed the P sound. These are both consonant sounds and sister sounds. P. P. B. B. Good. So I'm going to say some words that have either the P or the B sound in it. If the has a P sound, 
hold up one finger. If you hear the B sound, hold up two fingers. All right, here we go. Pig, pig. How many fingers you holding up? One. All right, what about big, big? Two, awesome job guys. What about bad, bad? Two, great job. What about number four, pad, pad? Ooh, one finger, good job guys. Number five, pin, pin, one finger, great job. Uh, bin, bin, two fingers, good job. What about bit, bit, two fingers, great job. Pit, pit, one finger, great. What about pet, pet, one finger, bet, bet, two fingers, awesome. All right, so let's say that b sound a couple of times, b, b. Great. Now, the b is a consonant sound, all right? It is a consonant sound. And we've also reviewed the p uh, sound. P, say that word. P, p, good. Now remember, it's a consonant sound also. And they're very similar, the p and b. That's why they're called sister sounds. The only difference between these sounds is their voicing. P is voiceless, whereas b makes our voice vibrate. You can feel the difference by placing your fingers on your voice box. So like lay your fingers aside the throat there and go puh, buh. You can feel the difference, can't you? Yes. All right. You guys did a wonderful job on that. All right. So let's review the basic code spelling for buh. Let's take a look at that power bar. Wow, that's a pretty big power bar, isn't it? That means that that B spelling is very common. Let's look at these two words, barn and rob. Great job. What's another spelling for B that we have learned? Double B maybe? Notice the size of that power bar though for this spelling, rubbing. What do you notice? It's not very common, is it? No. Look at the sound review here for the sound of B. We have the single B, bat, barn, and rob, and that power bar is very long. So it's very common. But then you've got the double B, and it's got rubbing and robber. That power bar is not very common. It's very small, so we're not gonna see that a lot. So let's look at our worksheet 3.1 root words. Behind that. All right, so our root words. Can you see the spelling pattern? Hmm, let's look at this, the root word nap. N-A-P, that's the root word, that's the main word. Then we're gonna add E-D to it, and what does that E-D tell us? It is in past tense. But notice when we make it past tense, we double that last consonant letter, okay? And then look at the I-N-G word. I-N-G tells us it is in present tense form, okay? But notice also that P is doubled again and adding I-N-G to it. So nap, change to nap, and napping. 
We doubled the P and added ED. We doubled the P and added ING. So you're gonna do the same thing with scrub, stub, chip, rob, grab, sob, stop, pump, and camp, okay? Let's do scrub together, scrub, all right? So how would we write scrubbed? Well, you would write it S-C-R-U-B. But what do we have to do with that B? We have to double the B and add E-D. So now we have the word S-C-R-U-B-B-E-D. Good. So then how do we do the I-N-G? We're gonna write scrub again by doubling that B. So we're gonna have S-C-R-U-B-B-I-N-G. Great job. So now you make sure you do that with the rest of those words. All right. All right. When you add a suffix to a one syllable word with a short vowel followed by a single consonant, you double the consonant before adding the suffix. Wow. So if it's a one syllable word with a short vowel followed by a single consonant, you double that consonant. For example, the word nap, it's a one syllable word. It's also a short vowel and it ends with a single consonant. So nap changes to napped. We doubled the P and added ED and we make nap into napping. We doubled P and added ING. So remember the roots of a flower stay in the ground. They help the flower grow in one place. And this is similar to root words we learn about. Okay, so we have nap, doesn't change, but then we can make it present tense by doubling the P and adding ing, and then making past tense by doubling the P and adding ed. So, statements and questions. Let's repeat these sentences. He got a big dog. Great. Did he get a big dog? Wonderful. Now each of these sentences is a particular type of sentence. How are they different? What do you notice different about them? Well, one has a period, right? It's telling you something. And then the next one, is asking you something because it has a question mark, right? So it's a question. Statements and questions. He got a big dog. Notice it does have a capital letter at the beginning and it also has a period at the end. This sentence is called a statement because it is telling us something, all right? Usually sentences that end with a period as punctuation are called statements. Statements and questions again. Did he get a big dog? It does start with a capital letter and it ends with a question mark because it is asking us something. And usually a sentence that ends with a question mark as punctuation are called questions. So is it a statement or a question? So Abraham likes to go swimming. Starts with a capital letter and ends with a period. So what is it? It's a statement. Great. Does your grandma like flowers? Notice it has a capital D and it has a question at the end. So what does that make it? A question. What about this one? Have you ever played checkers? 
It's got a capital at the beginning and a question at the end. So that makes it a question. We like to play games with our friends. Notice it has a capital at the beginning and a period at the end. So what is it? A statement because it's telling us something. Now, I need your help in adding the correct punctuation. So what I'd love for you to do is use your whiteboard and I want you to put the correct punctuation when I read the sentence, okay? Number one, Kate's mom and dad went on a trip. So is that telling us something or asking us something? It's telling us something, so what's gonna go at the end? A period, great job. All right, number two, remember you're gonna write the period or question mark down on your whiteboard. Where did Kate spend last summer? Is that asking us something or telling us? It's asking, so we need to put a what? A question mark, awesome job. Number three, was it a boring summer for Kate? Hmm, is that telling us or is it asking? It's kind of telling us, isn't it? So what do we need to have at the end? A period, great job. And your last one, Kate had a lot of fun. Are you gonna write a question mark or a period? I hope you put a period because it's telling us that she had lots of fun. There we go. All right, so let's look at another worksheet here. Let's see here. All right, so here's 3.2. Notice the directions on the side. It says have students trace and copy the punctuation mark. Then have students copy the sentences on the lines. So do you have to rewrite those sentences? Yes, you do, and add the punctuation. So notice the top line, you've got some question marks and periods. Just practice making question marks and periods up at the top. Now, on this page, it says the rabbit ran into its hole. You're gonna rewrite that sentence and you're gonna put what at the end? a period at the end, right? Because it is telling us something, all right? Look at number two. Where did your dad park his car? You've got to decide, is that telling you something or asking you something? So rewrite that sentence and put the correct punctuation. Number three and number four, the exact same thing, copy the sentences and add the correct punctuation. Now, let's look at five through 10. Number five has been done for you. It put the period in the box. So all you need to do is circle the period at the end. What you're going to do now is, you are going to fill in the missing mark so you have to put period or question mark in the box, and then you need to circle it also. So you've got two places there that you need to mark, all right? Put it in the box and circle one of the two out there. Okay. So let's go back to our slides. And actually, it wants us to look at our 3.3 take home. So we will look at that real quick since we're over here. Our 3.3 is just the story that we read from our reader about Kate's book. Notice there are eight words up there at the top that you can fill in the blanks about a letter from Kate. All right. 
Okay. And let's back here. All right, so our learning targets. I can write the different spellings for the consonant sounds. We did that. I can read words with the sister sounds, p and b. We did that. And we can identify the difference between a statement and a question. We did that. Great job. All right, my friends, thank you for working so hard for me today with this phonics lesson. I will see you back here again tomorrow.